In the mighty name of Jesus, for this word, this prayer will come forth. We know you ordained this day, Lord God, and we thank you for that these men of God be edified, built, and guided and established in your word so they can become mature and real men of God for their families, for their church, for their sons and daughters, and for anybody that they touch as they meet them throughout their lives. So, Father, we ask you, guide me, let me walk on the word of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 As I said, you know, I forgot my the, the sermon I wanted to bring, but I always forget those things as the Lord. Amen? Amen. So what we're going to talk about today is a subject that a lot of people don't normally talk about. I remember, I guess last month I wanted to talk about it, and the Lord said no, and I kept thinking I already preached it, and, and I knew I kind of didn't. But this is for you. You know why? Because you're all men. I love speaking to all men because men are the glory of God. I mean, you know, woman is the glory of man, but man is the glory of God, right? That's right. right. So, if we got to have the glory of God, there's something that he gives us. Yeah. Amen? Amen? There's something that he gives us to make sure we walk in his glory. When people see you, they ought to see God in you. But he also gave us something because of that called a birthright. Hmm. Now, the Old Testament birthright and the New Testament birthright. It's, it's kind of different, but I got some revelation on it, okay? But what we're going to do is talk about birthright, and not just birthright. Did you sell your birthright? Hmm. Ooh. I tell you, the speaker and every one of you out there right now sold your birthright. You know what I mean? You might have sold it for another religion. You might have sold it because something was more important to you in your life than God. Amen. Amen. Hello. Yeah. Amen. You know, uh, I used to preach this to Islams and Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons because they sold their birthright. But you said, well, Warren, how did I sell mine? First of all, you sold it because you ain't born again. If you're not born again, you don't even have a birthright. Amen. But if you are born again and you sold it, how did you sell it? Play. Record. I sold play. It. But thank God we got a grace for play. God. Record play. Right. Right. How did I sell it? Drugs. You sold your birthright for, for some weed. You sold your birthright for some alcohol. You sold your birthright for some heroin, some crank. You sold your birthright for some split between some woman's legs. Yeah. For those of you who don't know me, yes, I'm wrong. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you knew guys don't get shot. Amen. They're used to me. All right? I don't come up here in any form or fashion. I come up here with it real. Okay? Amen. So you sold it. Ooh! Sold your birthright. <laughs> Felt so good. Ooh! And she took all your money while you. Ooh! <laughs> you sold your birthright. That's right. Amen. Cheap price for some birthright. Easy. Right. So, let's go to Genesis chapter 25. We're going to talk about a guy who sold his birthright. <coughs> Every time I preach this message, I get a little choked up because it's so important to me that you get your birthright back. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Yeah. And we just want to let God do what he wants to do in this. I'm not going to have a whole lot of scripture, but we're going to be reading uh, you know, chapters in detail and looking at it and how he want to do it. Amen? So, I know a lot of you are familiar with the story of Esau and Jacob, right? Amen. So, we're going to look at this in detail. So, let's go to Genesis. Here we go. Chapter 21. Yeah. yeah. What? That's weird, man. Yeah. I said, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's my fault. I'm just, that was verse. Anyway, Genesis 25, verse 21. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> It's still early, man. We hear it in the morning. I yeah. it's five, all right? Let me, get, let me get warmed up here. <laughs> Amen. So starting at verse 21. And it reads, let me make sure. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Barren means she couldn't have no baby. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her and said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy land, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, 
and the elder shall serve the younger. Oh, that's deep. Mm -hmm. And when her days to deliver were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over, like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. <laughs> Amen. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she buried him. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in the tents. Now, you got to understand something about when, when, ain't this amazing to me? When he said he caught him by the heel, that's what Jacob means, heel catcher, right? Surplanter. Watch this. Kind artist. Manipulator. Oh. Ooh. And watch this. If we look at that verse, one was a hunter, the other one was playing the field. I mean, he was a mommy's boy. We're going we to see this. He's a mommy's boy. <laughs> Verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of the venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Looked like they'd already made divisions within the family. I love this boy more than that one. I love that one more than that one. Amen. 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 And Jacob saw pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he, he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was the name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day your birthright. Mm -hmm. Sell me your birthright. Now, ain't it funny that this guy's a hunter? He was coming from the field. He probably had a dead deer on his shoulders anyway, you know. And here's mommy's boy in a tent cooking. And you know, if you're really going to detail it, it was either like some llama beans or some black eyed peas or some kind of beans he was cooking. Some bean soup. So this guy said, sell me your birthright. Go to verse 32. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point of dying. I am at the point of dying. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? Don't ever despise your birthright. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he sweared unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage and lentils. Look at that, lentil beans. Lentils. Good. Lentils. Amen. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Esau despised. He sold his birthright just for a pot of lentil beans. Some beans, some black eyed peas, some baked beans. You know what I mean? He just brought great food from the field. Don't despise your birthright. Amen. Birthrights are usually given to the firstborn. We're going to look at that some, some more. The meaning of birthright, the meaning of birthright, when an inheritance was divided, the firstborn son received a larger share than his brothers. In other words, he would get a double portion just because you were the first child born. How many of you were the first child? Amen. That means when, when your parent died, they would leave you two portions. Everybody else would get one. You know what I mean? I so, being, oh my goodness, I'm going to go small. So, being the firstborn means you get a larger share of the inheritance. Birthright was the firstborn son's right to a special share when he, when, when an inheritance was divided. Now, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. When the inheritance was divided, Jacob knew this so well. How come he knew that? Think about his name. Heel catcher. Jacob. Ain't it funny how a baby can think in a mama's womb, I want to be the first one out? Ooh. See, when he grabbed him by the heel, he was trying to pull him back in that thing. I want to get out first. Even a child knew the importance of the perfect. Even as he became a man, he was like, sell me that. Because he knew it meant nothing to Esau. Now, watch this. Esau was so bad anyway, a hunter, Harry, he just thought he was mad daddy. Why? Because he didn't mess around with the Jewish women. I'm just give you some background. He didn't mess around with women in his own camp, or in his own town, or in his own city. Where did he go? Canaan land. <laughs> 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 he likes hanging out with the Canaanite women. 
that's where you get the Amorites and the Jusites and the Ripperites and everybody was around. You know, right. they come out of his heritage. Right? Yes. So if you have a Jezebite and an Amorite and a Kikadite or whatever they want to call them, a Hittite, they all came out of his, 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 his heritage. So that means that he made sure everybody was fighting themselves. Like that. But he went to sleep with the own people of his own village. Amen? Amen. But let's look at this story some more. Go to Genesis 27. We're going to look at it in detail. All right, where are you going with this morning? Don't worry, just hold on, hold on. We're going to let God take us. So we're going to read almost the rest of this story. And I want you to open up your mind's eye here. So we're going to start at chapter 27, looking at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold now, I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, my, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. Go hunting for me, son. And make me savory meats such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. That my soul may bless thee before I die. Who got children in here? Amen. I'm going to come somewhere with this in a minute, John. And Rebecca heard. There's Mama sneaking, listening, listening in. And Rebecca heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebecca spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make thee savory meat, that I may eat the blessed thee before the Lord and before before the Lord before my death. Mama no listening in. See, not only is the birthright powerful, but so is the father's blessing. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Oh Jesus. So is the Father's blessing. I never got the Father's blessing. I mean, I did. But my physical father, yeah. dead, only child, by my mentally retarded mother, amen. So I never got to have my Father's hands laid on me. Ooh. See, whether you're born again or not, if you're a father, you still lay hand on your kid to bless them. Amen. The scripture never says the father has to be born again to be honored. God just said in his Ten Commandments, honor thy father and mother. He didn't say the father had to be saved. He didn't say, he said, I don't care. You honor the father. I don't care if you're a drug addict. I don't care if you're an alcoholic. I don't care what his lifestyle is. You as his child still honor him. That's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he never did nothing for me. Still honor him. God didn't question that. Why? Because this is the first promise. What's the first promise? You shall have a long life right. upon the earth. Amen. Amen. Forget whether daddy's acting like a crazy fool, you still honor him. Why? Long life for you upon the earth. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to keep off. Verse 8. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to the according to that which I commanded. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats. And I will make thee savory meat for thy father, such as he loved. Now here's Rebecca well, forming a scheme. Amen. Amen. Look at mama. Because she's going to do it for the favor. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am smooth. Ooh. Now remember, Jacob's blind now. So when people go blind, their touch, their hearing, you know, their smell, all the other senses begin to, you know, get heightened. So, you know, Jacob and Isaac, he would know the difference between the Jacob and the Esau just by touch and smell. One works in the house, the other one's in the field. What do you think they're going to smell like? One funky, one smells like food. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Just that simple. Verse 12. My father, pre-adventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him a deceiver. What do you mean, seems to him as a deceiver? Your name means deceiver. <laughs> Amen. And I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, thy son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. 
Amen. And his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau. What's she doing now? She's covering up the smell. Uh-huh. Of Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. Now she's making him what? Hairy. Because he was smooth. Esau was hairy. Verse 17. And she gave the savory meat and the bread, and which she had prepared, into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I'm Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou bettest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Look at him lying on Jesus. How many of y'all don't lie? <laughs> oh, the Lord gave me this. There's plenty of times that I was buying some crack, talking about, oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, y'all never did that. <laughs> Praying in the tongues after I was like, oh, son, I like my sheep. <laughs> Thinking that was Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at me like, who the heck is this? <laughs> 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 anyway, but he lied on the Lord, right? Verse 21, and Isaac said unto Jacob, come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he fell to him and said, the voice is Jacob's, amen, voice, amen. but the hands are Esau, mm -hmm. hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, check that out. He judged it not. He could not figure it out. Hmm. He knew the voice, but the smell, the touch. Amen. Because mama dressed him up good. Mm -hmm. Mama, <laughs> hey man, your wife gonna know you. She gonna, she, she knows how to hook you up. That's right. <laughs> and mama's favorite, she know how to hook him up. Who's always been there for you? Papa never show up to the jail, but mama right there. That's yeah. right. But none of y'all been to jail, okay. Well, <laughs> mama shows up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mama <laughs> and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am still alive. And he said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him and he did eat and he brought, it, brought him wine and he drank and his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of the raiment, and blessed him and said, See, the smell, my son, is the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Mama knew how to dress that thing up. Therefore God gave thee of the dew of the heaven and of the fat of the earth, fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow. See, here's the blessing, y'all. Let people serve thee, and the nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brother, and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that cursed thee, and bless be everyone that blessed thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scared going out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau, his brother, came in. Woo! That Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. <clears throat> ah, yes, I hear you, Lord. And he, he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who? Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son. That firstborn, and I see trouble see him. Who? Who are you? <laughs> Wait a minute. Whoa, who are you? <laughs> see him. So it's boggling his mind because Isaac understands something that he just did. And you get ready to figure this out in a second. 
Amen. Amen. You get ready to figure this out. This is why I'm, I'm getting, boy, I'm going to tell you. Amen. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I'm thy son, thy firstborn. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Who? <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> and has taken venison and brought it to brought it me. And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. You know what I got out of that? Once you receive the Father's blessing, you can't take it back. Even if it's, even if it's gotten through deceit. Mm. Once the Father blesses you, it can't be taken back. Mm. Well, he deceived him. He lied. Why can't he take it back? Because it came from the Father. Can the Father lie? No. Nope. Amen. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. I hear you waiting with him. Huh? Mm -mm -mm. And he shall be blessed. Verse 34. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceedingly bitter cry. He went to go. Mm -hmm. He cried because he understood. He had already sold his birthright. He ran. Oh my goodness, I just keep wanting to jump ahead of myself. But he sold his birthright, and now his blessing got ripped up. But watch what he does too. And he cried. Ah! How many of you cried when you sold your birthright? Ooh, Jesus. How many of you cried at that last hit? How many cried coming through this door? Because you know it's time for a life change. Amen. It was like going through a birth canal because you knew everything in your life was about ready to change. If you really wanted to change. Yeah. Yeah. I cried like a baby when I came into a program because I wanted to change. And it was painful to change. I knew I had to change. Or I'll be dead. Maybe. Come on. Come on. That's right. I've been too used to doing my dirt. I done gave up birthright, done gave up everything. Lost daughter, lost wife, mm. lost home, lost job, lost everything. Come on, man. I knew it was a time for a change and it hurt. You know, the night before I went out for my last bitch. I figured, well, it'd be the last time I get high. Well, none of y'all never did that neither. So I know I'm going in the program tomorrow. Let me go do this. Oh, let me go do that. Come on, Split. Me and you this evening. Because this is the last time. Then no, I was going to relapse two more times after that. But this was the last time. Oh, y'all ain't going to do that. No, I can't say relapse because none of y'all had that opportunity. You know, and I'm not even supposed to speak relapse. But I, like I keep telling you, I'm a realist. That's right. I'm a realist. As long as you wrapped in this stupid flesh, yeah. you're going to make a mistake. But one be. of the things you got to understand is that forget people. Yeah. <laughs> when Jesus said he covered it before the foundations of the world, this coming. The only one that's going to make you feel bad, I pray you don't. But statistically, at least two of y'all might not relapse in here. And do I mean relapse just by getting high? No. I'm not talking about you going to have to get high again. But it will be something that's going to try to drag you back. And you will go back according to your flesh. If you're not married, you won't want to fornicate. You relapse. Amen. Amen. If you were a deceitful businessman and you figured like cheating, you relapsed. You relapsed in here, not from this. You relapsed by your thinking. That's right. Amen. Amen. And then that nasty thinking gonna take you back to see you. You're not doing the drug or selling your birthright because it feels good. You're doing it because something is hurting in you that you can't figure out. So you numb it because you know it don't feel good. You know you're not smoking dope or shooting dope or doing alcohol because you 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 know you're doing it because something is hurting in you. Amen. Amen. And that's the relapse. Whatever's hurting you. But once you figure out, oh, the goodness of Christ. Amen. Amen. And you figure out how much he suffered. Your suffering ain't nothing. Amen. Compared to what he did for you. Amen. 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 Going down different road. Y'all remember what verse I left though? Amen. Go to verse 34 again. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceedingly bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away thy blessing. And he said, 
Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has surplaced me these two times. Now I got a problem with that. Jacob didn't rip him off the first time. He gave it up. But he began to blame him, didn't he? He blamed him twice. But the first time he gave that up freely. Just like me and you gave it up freely. We sold our birthright freely. You know what I mean? Just gave it up. Because no matter how much I praise Jesus, if somebody said, here's some crack, I dropped the Bible and went and smoked that. Because that was my God. Hello. I don't care. Man, you do this for me here. Here, Here's an eight. Ooh, I'll come right back home and read my Bible while smoking. Wow. Wow, look at this word. Amen. This word is awesome. Oh. Mm. Man, that's an abomination. <laughs> no, it ain't. I thank God sometimes that I'll smoke and crack reading my Bible. You know why? Because it kept me. It covered me. People were telling me, how could you do that? How could you do that? I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself out, man. I needed something to bring me out. That's right. <laughs> if it was going to be this word, I was going to keep on in it no matter how wretched and disgusting and acts I was doing. It didn't matter. I got a Bible that smelled like nothing but cigarettes, crack, alcohol, because no matter where I went, I took it and read it. Despite me. Amen. Amen. I couldn't bring me up, but I knew it would. Amen. Of course, I'll break that. Amen. Woo. Verse 36, and he said, it's not this right to name Jacob, for he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, how thou, how thou not reserve a blessing for me? Give me a blessing, daddy. And Isaac answered the son of Esau, behold, I have made him thy Lord. Uh-oh. And all his brethren have I given to him for service. And with corn and wine, and have I sustained him? And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and, of the, and the dew of the heaven from above. And by thy word shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother. See? Ooh, my goodness. Ooh. See, remember, Jacob's blessing was his brother going to serve him. His blessing is that you're going to serve your brother. All because he sold, sold his birthright. And by thy word shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass. When thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. And then will I kill my brother. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. You got some haters out there. I'm going to kill him. You got haters right now who don't want you to come back here. They don't want you to receive your blessing. And I'm not talking about old friends. I'm talking about blood, brothers, cousins, uncles, Come on. sisters, family members who, who talked about you, couldn't stand you, but loved the fact that you were in your condition. Because I could point my finger at you and not at myself. Oh, and now you're going to walk with the Father's blessing and a birthright? They hate you. Because now you're an indictment against them. But guess what you still got to do? No. I had a relative call me last night, blew my mind. All they said was, and I love him too. All he said was, man, I wanted to hear your voice. You know? I'm like, yeah, that's great, because we couldn't find him for a while. You know, he's like one of the last ones, one of my first cousins. He said, man, I just want to let you know, I just want to hear your voice. And I'm so proud of you. You know what I mean? And you know, in my mind now, it's like, well, what did I do to make you so proud of me? You know, because I just made up a conscious decision that I don't want to live like this home. But he said, cuz, I knew where you were. I knew how you were. And to see you today, 
and to see the things you're doing for the Lord today. Don't you know you made me recognize who God is? Oh, my goodness. I begin to almost cry. Because he wasn't saying it was the Bible. He wasn't saying it was the preaching. He was saying, because I saw where you came from and where you are today, I know there must be a Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why I keep telling you, gentlemen, a lot of times it ain't going to be you going home and speaking no scripture. It's just going to be your lifestyle. Amen. It's just going to be your lifestyle. And God's going to use you to bless all them haters. Them haters going to want some money, going to say, here. Them haters going to need some help, going to say, how can I help? Amen. 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 Hey man, I'm playing some of you like, no, I just want to go. No, man. <laughs> Not me. Oh, no. <laughs> Not me. How far do I want to go with this? Now watch this. The main thing about the Father's blessing is this. It can't be taken back once it's given to you. And I need to say this. Remember I asked you? Who in here is a father? Mm -hmm. yep. I don't care how old your child is. Fathers. You get visitations up here too? Your kids come? Yeah. Do anybody have their father that comes here and visit them? Yeah. The reason why I'm asking you this is because if your father comes with his wife and your mother and they're visiting you, he may not understand it, but go to him and say, Daddy, can you bless me? Can you give me your father's blessing? Like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, son. He may not even understand Christianity. Yet. Show him. Just grab his hand and say, Father, just say something. Wonderful over my life, even if it's just you. Know. The greatest thing I ever did, I was still bound, and my daughter was graduating college. And all these men, and you know, and, and, and you know, up. what I mean by bound, I was homeless. Daughter was getting ready to separate from her mother. But I was still working in the community called the Badlands in Philadelphia. You know what I mean? But I was homeless, couldn't find a job, couldn't do nothing. And people still recognized me as Warren the Crappy. No matter what I did, I was still warring the cracky. But I still said in my heart, I'm going to still help those who need help. I don't care what those people say about me. Because God gave me a new identity, and I'm going to walk in it. Amen. I don't care. They're going to call you everything under the book. But unless you believe it, it ain't true. Amen. Amen. You know what you're doing. So everybody's at my daughter's graduation, and I see all these men standing up saying how they did for her and did for that. You know, that's kind of make me feel terrible as a father because I had nothing to offer. You know? And then they also gave me a minute to say some words. And here it is. I'm hearing all these men say, well, we helped her when she was this. And I'm thinking, hey, man, I took her to school. I took her to death. I was there. I walked almost from Philadelphia to Washington Howard University just to be at a graduation. I did all these things. And not only did God bless me, I went in those stands. I walked in, got a ticket almost right up front to hear Oprah Murphy give, the, you know, uh, 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 to give her speech there. But God kept blessing me, but nobody saw it. Because I wanted to show off instead of letting God show off. Well, y'all didn't hear me. But anyway, Amen. but at the graduation party, I stood up and I said, Lord, I don't know what to say. And he said, yes, you do. He said, you got something greater than every man in this room who claimed he helped to get a car, who bought this, who paid for books, who gave him that, who did this. I said, what is that? The Father's blessing. Amen. He said, now call your daughter in the middle of all those people. Put her down in the center and laid my hand on it. It was really wonderful because my daughter ran up and she just kneeled before my feet. And I laid my hand on her and blessed her with my father's blessing. And she never stopped being blessed. Today we're the closest, closest parent and child you ever want to meet. She's getting ready to get married next month. And guess who performed her wedding? Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her the father's blessing. She got a business. She, she's an entrepreneur school teacher. You know, headed for a master's degree in journalism and, and African American history. Out of the retarded woman and a crackhead, here come the Miss Black America. Come on. <laughs> I want to show y'all because y'all might like her too much. But anyway, <laughs> she's fine, man. She's fine. <laughs> like, well, I made that thick <laughs> But my point is this. <laughs> My point is this, man, if you got children that come up here, or when you go home, I don't care what condition you're in, gentlemen, lay your hands on your kids and give them the Father's blessing. Because no one can take that away. 
And it is your duty to do it. If you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have a, you, it's not a commandment. But why wouldn't you want your child to be blessed despite you? Amen. Don't you want, we always say we want our ch children to be better than we do, right? That's right. Yes, well, I guarantee you, when you lay your hands on them and bless them, you shall be, you shall be blessed and not cursed. You know, we all have no weapon form against yourself, and everything that speaks against your judgment, they shall come in. Come on. Amen. You will be better than me. Put everything you can think of in your spirit on your kid. I don't even care if they're adults. I don't care if your child is 40, 50, 60. However old they are. Grab and say, you know what? I forgot to do this. I forgot to bless you. Let you know what I love you. Amen. Go back and do it. <laughs> but watch this. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Because once we come to Jesus Christ, hallelujah, yes. we receive, ooh, Jesus, we receive our birthright again. Amen. Ain't that wonderful in grace? Yes. Everyone in here who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's your birthright. Yes. Can you imagine that? Well, how can I do that more? That's some wretched, dirty, stinking stuff. Yeah. But Jesus said, I saw it before the foundations of the world. I know the ending from the beginning. Don't worry about it. Don't let the devil tell you you'll never be nothing because you dropped this and you dropped. See, see, this is why I can't understand people in the AA program who keep selling their birthright to that. I even heard a guy say once, you know, now it wasn't, he wasn't saying it because of his sobriety. He was saying it because he worshiped the program. I give up my wife and kid before I ever stop coming to AA. What? Are you crazy? <laughs> That's your worship in our organization. You done sold your birthright. You big dummy. Now I could have understood it if he was saying for his sobriety sake. But watch this. Not getting high will make you say no, 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 no. Hello. Just because you don't get high don't make you say People sold their birthright for 12 steps. Hello. How do you not sell your birthright? You don't sell out. Once you accept Jesus Christ, you don't sell it out. You may, you may falter. You may fall. But you get back up and say, I'm not selling out. Amen. You got to understand that you've already been forgiven and the blood has already covered you. The only one that keeps condemning you is you. That's right. Like you're never going to make a mistake. Oh, you're going to make plenty. Because you know why? You got your birthright back and the devil going to try and take it at every turn. Because if you didn't have it back, he wouldn't even bother you. Right. He wants you to sell it to him. Hmm. Hmm. You ain't never been born again. Ain't no way in the world you can act like that and say you saved. How could you go through a year at King Land and, and fall? How could you go through a year at King Land and fall to King? How could you go through a year at King Land and do all that nasty? Stuff, you know, people are crazy. <laughs> Come on. And then you think it's conviction when it ain't nothing but the devil. Conviction says, I'm going to bow my knee. And I'm going to take a prayer. And I'm going to say, God, I love what I'm doing. And please help me, Jesus. I can't stop it. And he goes, You're already forgiven. I just love you if you know when you come back. Amen. Amen. I don't know why I'm going down this road, but let's look at this some more. Hebrews 12. We're going to get ready to come very shortly. <laughs> and starting at uh, verse 1, God took this down a different road. I remember the first time I ever preached this was at a homeless show. And my goodness, I had every religion in the world in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a powerful, powerful thing. But I'm already talking to born again people. Who already yeah. got their birth right back? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> So you need to rejoice over your birthright. Never sell it again. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, starting at verse 1. If I can get to Hebrews 12. There we go. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. What's that word, patience? Endurance. Yeah. Don't give up. Don't quit. 
Run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto who? Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Now if he can endure the cross, you can endure this, gentlemen. Amen. 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 Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest you be weary and faint where? In your mind. That's the attack. Yeah. If I can keep convincing you you're a mess, you want to believe it. But you got to not believe me calling you a mess. You got to realize, yes, you are a mess in your flesh. But Jesus changed you. Amen. You're no mess no more. Your flesh is. Yeah. But you got to learn to tell your mind to tell your flesh what to do. Amen. Does that work every time? Oh, I guess you do that all the time, preacher. Hey, no. Come on. I just had a battle. The sermon I was going to bring up here was called Spiritual Duds. Amen. <laughs> I had no clue what it was, dude. But I was going through such battles. Uh, in a, a few weeks ago, I was a man. It seemed like every turn, the job, the church, you know, the family, the wife, everybody was it just, you know, and I kept saying, is it me that's doing this? You know, and I kept telling God, God, I'm a good man. I mean, people had me feeling like I was this really nasty individual. And I'm like, no, Lord, I'm a good man. Cut, why should Because I wouldn't compromise. Amen. Come on. That's right. See, I wouldn't compromise. So, but they had me still thinking I was just, no, I'm not doing that. Uh-uh. Not here. No, I'm not going to do it. But I kept feeling like, maybe I shouldn't do it. And one night I'm laying there and I couldn't sleep. And, well, and I cried like a baby, too. Amen? Amen. See, I'm going to wait until I preach the sermon, then I can tell you the whole story. But I cried like a baby. But I'm laying there, and I said, Lord, you can take my job, you know. I don't care about this job. You can take the money, take the house, take the car, take it all. I don't care no more. I just, I just but then my cry came. Just don't take your spirit. Hey. See, you take everything, but don't take your spirit from me. And, and all of a sudden, I heard it so clear in my spirit. The spiritual dud. <laughs> 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 Spiritual dud. I mean, I literally stopped crying. A uh, heck is a spiritual dud. <laughs> and he made me think of a dud. You know, in wartime, when, they, when a bomb dropped and it didn't explode, it was called a what? A dud. So I began to look up everything concerning their dud. And even when I looked up the meaning of the word dud for missiles and bombs, God opened my spiritual eye concerning it. And do you know there's Greek words for that? Spiritual. I tell you, man, everything in the Word of God will speak to you. Yeah, yeah. Everything. But the main spiritual that is this, and I'm going to come up here next time and preach it, but the main spiritual that is this, unbelieving and faithless. Come on. Ooh. Amen. Yes. Say something. Yes. Unbelieving and faithless. And God can't stand a person who is unbelieving and faithless. I don't care how much Bible you know. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you speak in tongues. If you have no faith and there's a sign of unbelief, that word unbelief is a pestos and it means spiritual death. Amen. <coughs> Your spiritual death. You're ineffective. God can't use you. You know I got up after that. Hello. But coming later. Amen. But let's finish reading. <laughs> But don't faint in your mind. Verse 4. You have not yet resisted on the blood striving against sin. And you have forgotten. Oh my goodness. You have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. No faint thou when thou art rebuked. For the Lord, for whom the Lord loveth, he chases and scourges every son wherever he receives. If you endure chastening, what's chastening? This if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with son. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? If you're one of his, he's going to whip your tail. Hello. <laughs> Why do you keep following me, Lord? Because you're mine. Amen. <laughs> when I leave you alone, then you ain't mine. Yep. Hello. Amen. Good. Matter of fact, I might just 
talk about that next class. We'll see. But if you be without chastisement, where are all our partakers? Everybody is a partaker of discipline. Therefore, you are what? Bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us. Your daddy's whipped your tail, right? So why can't God? And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Oh, it seemed good, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward is yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto him, unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up your hands which hang down and feeble knees, yes. and make straight paths for your feet. Let that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up and trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornication, fornicator or profane person as who? Esau. Esau. Who for one more sou of me sold his birthright. Mm -hmm. One more sou of me sold his birthright. Don't sell your birthright. For you know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance Though he sought it carefully with what fear. You see that that boy was crying out loud. But he sold it so simply. If you came in the Canaan land, don't sell it so simply. Don't come here thinking this again. Don't come here thinking you can run again. I don't even know how you can come here and think you can play with the guys who are here because you see brothers who have been here for much at a time and God is changing them and now you see their spiritual side more so than their fleshly side and you want to come here brand new and bring the street, yo, home, what's up? And you realize that man, been the, you don't realize that man, been the, wait a minute, he, wait a minute, he's just changed. He ain't forgot the street right. hood. He ain't forgot how to work in the street. He ain't forgot how that stuff sounds. Come on. Come on, he's still flesh. He remember that all the time. He ain't gonna never leave you. You better know how to function in the street. Paul did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But all you did was see a changed individual. Amen. It blows my mind when I go places and preach and teach or walk up and down. I know they're looking at the glory of God because <laughs> people can't recognize me from who I used to be. I mean, I had a woman tell me once, uh, you know, a, a drug addict and a, and a homeless person and, and somebody who did this could never function in society correctly. And she didn't know who she was talking to. <laughs> <laughs> no, they could never be productive human beings. I'm like, I'll never tell you my testimony. <laughs> <laughs> Until the Lord tells me, because one day I'm going to blow her natural mind. Yeah. You know? And I'm just listening to it. You would never be nothing, because you was once homeless and drug addict and alcoholic. And I'm looking at it. You know, but Mr. Red, you have such a great job, and you know we want to thank you for helping us with this. And that. Come on. Yeah. 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 But one day I'm gonna sit there and tell you my story that I was homeless, that I've been in prison, that I smoked crack on a daily basis, and I was a hoe. <laughs> you think God can't use me? He used Mary Madeline. Hello. That's right. Sense, sense. Amen. But don't sell your birthright. Go to Romans 9. We're almost coming to a close in a second here. <clears throat> Romans 9. We're going to look at some more. <clears throat> Romans 9. <clears throat> Starting at verse 1. And it says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. Now there, there's one thing right there. God just stop me. Conscience. You know, those in the world say they have a conscience. But you who are born again and got your birthright, who's the conscience and who does the scripture say the conscience is? Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Ghost. Mm. So the Holy Ghost has been preaching your conscience for a long time, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Verse 2, that I had great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brother, my kinsman, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? Who is over all? God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are Israel. Mm. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they the children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is... They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Those who are the children of the flesh are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of the promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Oh my goodness. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had come conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither have done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of the works, but of him that called. It, it, was, it was said unto her, the elders shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but watch this, Esau have I hated. Now, how can Jacob he loved and Esau he hated? My question was that was, I thought God couldn't hate. Mm -hmm. Hello? Can God hate? Yeah. Hmm. See, agape love has nothing to do with emotion. See, because if it has something to do with emotion, all of us would be going to hell. Because there's five types of love. The other four, phileo, storge, uh, eros, and I think the other one means like a thermostat. I can't remember the Greek word for it. But there's five types of love in the Bible. You know, phileo's friendship, storage age family, right? Eros is sexual, sensual. And the other one is thermostat, means passion. But agape, as you notice, all those had emotional uh, connections to it. But agape love has no emotion. That means God loves you continuously, unconditionally, because if it was emotion wrapped in it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. Why? It's just love for you, period. It's just love for your enemy, period. It's just love. And that's what he tells us to do. Despite the pain that comes from your family, love them. Despite the pain that comes from you, just love them. Just love them. You just got to give it up. It's just love. Amen. Amen. That's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. But when he said, Jacob, I love him, and Esau, I hate it. In order for you to hate someone, you must once love them. Come on. Oh, my goodness. In order for you, so if you tell me you hate me, you have much once loved me. Come on, somebody. You can't hate me and not say you have loved me. The only ones that can't have any emotion, they call it narcissism or narcissistic personalities. You know why? Cult leaders and, and serial killers have that personality. Why? Because they feel nothing. They can kill you, cut off your head, rape you, strip you dead. You know, a cult leader only cares about himself. He killed the whole congregation. Narcissistic. But in order for you to hate me, you have much once love. So when I hear people say, I hate you, bro. Oh, you really love me, don't you? Good God. I love you too. <laughs> Amen. So that's the revelation I got out of that. Let's keep going. What shall we say then? The verse 14. What shall we say then? Is therefore righteousness with God? Of unrighteousness will God, God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will, and have mercy, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then is so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth what? Mercy. mercy. Amen. Let's finish this out. Galatians chapter 4, we're going to come to a close and take a break. Galatians chapter. Well, you got a little bit of something out of this. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But the main thing I'm trying to get to you is don't sell your birthright. Yeah. You got it back. Ha! Huh? You were born again. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus did it for you. He adopted you. He accepted you. Amen? Amen. That's why you can't look at nobody else and say, God don't want 
you. Right. Ooh. You can't look at any race, creed, or color and say God don't want you. You can't look at any sexual orientation and say God don't want you. Right. Who are you? Amen. Amen. I know that's hard for some people. I got to love a homosexual? Yeah. I got to love a lesbian? Yep. Yeah. I got to love a racist? Yep. Yeah. I got to love somebody who's just a, a pedophile? Yeah. I got to love a murderer? Yeah. I got to love all these sinful people? Yeah. Why? Because you were capable of doing them too. Yeah. Amen. Then uh, sin in this Bible that you're not capable of, you just choose not to do it. Mm -hmm. I ain't gay. You chose not to do that. Okay. That's why gays ain't, ain't born, they're made. Yep. Amen. You chose not to do it. I wouldn't sleep with no animal. You chose not to. But there's some fool out there who chose to. That's Good. right. That's why you can choose not to get high again. Yes. yes. Why well, need the healing and deliverance from the Lord? Lay hands on me. Oh, I must fast 40 days and 40 nights. Your fast is going to take. Now wake up and choose not to do it. <laughs> choose not to fornicate. Amen. Amen. Keep your hands in your pocket. No, no, man, don't take it back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's close it with this. Galatians 9. I mean, 4. Galatians 4, verse 9. <laughs> Galatians 4, verse 9. But now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, have turned you again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage. Go back up to verse one. I'd rather read that. Now I say that an heir, hallelujah, yeah. as long as he is a child, differ nothing from the servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under who? Tutorers and governors. Welcome to Canaan land. Under tutors and governors to do what? Well, <laughs> under tutors until the time appointed of the Father. That's why you're here a year. You want to be taught by staff, disciplined by staff, mm -hmm. corrected by. Oh, look at that. Some people don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you you younger than me. You can't tell me when to get up. Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Because mm -hmm. God ain't looking at your age. Spiritual age is a lot different than physical age. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. I could be, what, 13, but because for 13 years of my life I've been doing nothing but the Lord, and you could be 92 and you just came to the Lord last year, I'm older than you. Amen. In the spirit. Amen. Amen. Yep. But he's under tutors and governors until the time point of the Father. Even so, when, even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. What's the elements of the world? ABC of the world, the devil. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. To do what? Redeem them that were under the law, that we might have received the adoption. There you go. The adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth his spirit unto his son, into your hearts, crying, Daddy, Daddy, Abba Father, Daddy, Daddy. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. Look at yes. you. Oh, look at you. Oh, my goodness. Look at your birth right here. Woo. And if a son, then an heir. And of God do claim. What did I tell you? If you're firstborn, oh, my goodness, and you're an heir. See, this is why I tell people, quit praying for a whole lot of money and all that. Because what? You have an inheritance. Right. If you're obedient to God, you got the inheritance. Amen. I don't need your money. I don't even need to pray for money. I don't need to pray for a house or a car. I never do. You know why? I lie to my God. He gives it to me. Why? Because right. I'm his obedient son. Amen. Soon as I mess up, he whips my tail. But when I get it right, he blesses me. He's a God who has a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. So why not say, God, give me a house and a car? What do you mean give you a house and a car? You already own it. Go get it. But if you mess it up, I'm taking it. I ain't gonna let you get it. Amen. God he never gave you nothing and took it back. You relinquished it. Yeah. Hello. So here it is. The earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof and all that the world's therein. So if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that the world's therein, then that means my daddy owns everything. So if he owns everything, why well, I got to ask for it? All I got to do is lot up in obedience and I'm gonna get an inheritance an inheritance because I'm an inheritor. So therefore it's mine. So why do I have to keep praying for something that's already mine? I need to find out what's wrong with me so I can line up in obedience to get what I deserve from my father as an inheritance. Right. Yeah. I hope you understood all that because I sure 
don't get a shot. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. Let's finish this out. Wherefore thou art no more servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Verse 8. How be it then when you knew not God? You did service unto, unto them which by nature are no gods. You see, that's lowercase g. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you were, you desire again to be a mother. So you can't know God and go backwards and turn back to your old ways, your old sin, and sell your birthright. Amen? And last verse, verse 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom of wherever Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We take this great Lord, and uh, we bless you. And I pray that these men do not sell their birthright. I welcome those who are new. I welcome those who are just getting to learn you. Your babies, Lord God. Nurture them, cover them, and hold them. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.